appears that you have more skill than I thought. Yay. All the shots had a great composition, and I could really feel a connection to the characters and their lines. So what's the verdict? Yeah. Does that mean you agree to be our director, Farina? <laughs> Did you think I would agree just like that? After our performance of the Little Oceanid, I've begun to make a name for myself again, you know. In fact, I've already had several troops approach me for the Fontanalia Film Festival. Unfortunately, the scripts were all pretty boring and didn't pique my interest. If others were to find out I agreed to work with you so easily, then, well... But I'm the traveler. Hey, didn't we have a deal? What else do we need to do to convince you, Farina? I fed you, uh, I made you an well, ad. What about the pay? Huh? You know, how much you're willing to pay me to be the director? The pay is also an important factor for me to consider, you know. We're like well, broke. Uh, I can offer Apparently. You this much? What? That's all? If Nervulet were to hear of this, he could charge you with underpaying your labor. I'm sorry, but our crew is in a tight financial spot at the moment. I see. Farina, well, he's so broke. Take pity on him. unlikely now that I'll join your crew, there's still something I'd like to ask. Exactly what film are you planning to make? Oh, uh, our script is an adaptation of The Two Musketeers. Huh. Wait, you mean the suspense thriller novel that was a number one bestseller? Oh, so Farina's read it too. Of course I read it. I've always had a keen interest in artistic works that strike a chord with the populace. I see. It all makes sense now. You must have used most of the budget to pay for the copyright. Uh, not really. The novel's Just go with author it. Just go with it, sir. to me practically for free once he heard that I wanted to make a film adaptation of the story. The lack of budget is due to another issue. He probably just wants to get his name out there. So, Mora isn't the most important thing to him right now. It reminds me of a delivery courier who wears one of my designs while traveling all across Tavat. I didn't charge her much for the outfit either. The exposure she provides for my brand is well worth it. Yeah, but I so did not know that her outfit was made oh, by you, are you until a today. Of this story, Farina? Well, uh, it's all right. The pacing of the story is good, but the character relationships could use some work. When I was reading it before, I always felt like some things were left on a rather unsatisfactory note. I have high standards, you know. Ahem, Mr. Xavier. If, hypothetically speaking, I agree to be the director, how much freedom would I have in terms of script revisions and creative interpretation? Oh, oh no, what is oh, this movie going to turn into? Freedom as you would need. I wouldn't dare doubt the tastes of Fontaine's greatest star. I would. Good. Then I'm free to alter the script as I see fit? Absolutely, no problem. We're counting on you, Director Farina. Don't ruin this. Mm. All right. It seems that your crew really can't go on without my care and direction. So, you agree? Yes, I agree. Although the pay is well below what someone of my caliber deserves. A great script calls for a great director. I mustn't let a perfectly good story be ruined due to lack of funds. If you have fine cheese and bread, you wouldn't just let it sit on the counter and get moldy just because you lack an oven, right? Why do you need an oven for the cheese and bread just like eat them they're already prepared you don't need an oven oh but thank you Archon above i'm not dreaming am i somebody pinch me there's no more hydro archon you know and it's still a little early to celebrate there's a lot that goes into shooting a film 
Although the trickiest tasks of finalizing the script and casting the actors have already been taken care of, we'll still need to reserve filming locations. Not to say set up lighting and props. And uh, by the way, since we'll be filming the two musketeers, we'll need to find an action choreographer. Ideally, a professional who has actual experience with muskets. Yes, I've thought about this as well. I was hoping that you might know someone who could handle the job. Why would Farina know someone skilled with muskets? Oh, actually, mm -hmm. hmm. if Florand, this was probably. before, I could have simply asked Florand. But it's already been some time since I last talked to her. Navia can also use firearms, but unfortunately, her style is quite different from that of the characters <laughs> in the story. I'd say Could so. Could we ask the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol? Oh, you mean the Special Patrol's musketeers? Yes, that's right. They work with muskets every day. I can't think of anyone more qualified than them. They would be under Nervilette's jurisdiction. Unfortunately, I, uh, don't have any connection with them at all. Hmm... So, in the end, we still have to start by talking to Nervalette. Have you not no spoken to, to him since I everything? I Captain Chevres. Oh, you do? Wait, Chiari, how do you know the captain of the Special Patrol's Musketeers? No particular reason. Running a business means dealing with some trouble from time to time, and she's helped me out on a few occasions. In return, I've helped her handle a few situations in which the Special Patrol couldn't get involved directly. So, we've gotten to know each other over time. Uh, so you're saying there's been times when the Special Patrol needed a fashion designer to handle a situation? Her work is becoming more and more mysterious. It'd be best to keep it that way. Anyway, enough about that. What do you all think about asking the Captain to be our musket action choreographer? She sounds professional enough. She is a captain, after all. <laughs> I have no objections. But I imagine the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol must be busy with their duties. Do you think she'd really have time to help with shooting a film? And then there's the issue of pay. Well, it just so happens that she's also not the kind of person that's just after Mora. As for whether she has time... I'll have to go and ask her first. Then I'll leave that to you. Macaroni's on sale today, so I've got to go. You can just tell me how things went when we discuss tomorrow's plan later. No problem. <laughs> Having Farina join feels like a big boost to our team. Of course. Just wait until the day of our premiere. You'll witness the true power of my name in these lands. <laughs> You'll be so glad I agreed to help. I can guarantee that even the standing tickets will be sold out. I'll be sure to ask some people I know to see if they'd be willing to act as extras. <laughs> Who exactly you do you know? You're more comfortable with your own reputation now. I didn't ask for the Clapper Loader's commentary, Paimon. I can't wait to see our film's premiere. Then let's get going. I happen to know where Chevrolet is today. By the way, I'm curious. If my pay is so low, then what about our two lead actors? Didn't they travel here all the way from Inazuma? Actually, they told us that they see the trip as part of a cultural exchange, so they didn't ask for any pay. What? So is every person into that who doesn't want money gathered here to shoot this film? Don't tell me Chiori isn't being paid either. <laughs> I already knew Xavier from before, and he's also agreed to give my brand some good exposure. It seems the gods have really smiled upon you, Xavier. And that certainly doesn't include me, mind you. Frida's like, I'm getting my money. I don't care about the rest of you, but I am getting my money. Good for her. I now have part one of the two musketeers. Besides the macaroni, I should also pick up some tomato sauce. I hope you're not putting those two things together. Mm -hmm. 
I really want some mac and cheese now. <laughs> but like baked mac and cheese. Yeah. It's different. All right. This is the place. And there she is. But where's the captain? There's hardly anyone around here. She's over there. The one with an eye patch reading in front of the newsstand. Oh, her! Paima could tell there was something different about her. She seems kind of intimidating. Please wait here for a moment. I'll Isn't she a her. foodie? She's Isn't her now, so you idle animation just eating a bunch of snacks? Way. Working? But isn't she just standing there and reading a novel? Just trust me. Oh, all right. Let's see what happens then. She really sure is a mysterious person. She claims just to be a fashion designer, but she knows all these powerful people. The court of Fontaine isn't particularly tolerant of visitors from overseas, so it isn't easy for a foreigner to promote their brand here. Even more so in the competitive world of fashion. Even a local like me just trying to make a film has to face all kinds of challenges. So I can only imagine what Chiori has been through to get where she is today. I'm sure that having more connections has definitely worked in her favor. Reading on the job? detective novel one main character no multiple branching storylines I see how's the plot coming along one of the main characters is about to make a choice that will affect the rest of his life I'd wager he's going to make the wrong choice anyway to speed things up there's something I need your help with you know that doesn't depend on me it all comes down to what the character chooses Excuse Which me? is exactly why I'm here to help. <sighs> All right. It appears he made the wrong choice in the end. Halt! Huh? What's going on? Hand over whatever you're holding. Oh, it's just a book. I didn't buy anything else. Then I'm sure you wouldn't mind letting me have a look. Excuse me, officer. I don't mind you standing around here, not purchasing anything. But I'd prefer if you didn't disturb my customers. It's bad for business, you know. And I'm sure she'd prefer you not don't do anything give me illegal. That act. You won't be able to get off so easily either. I am Chevrus, Captain of Fontaine's Special Security and Surveillance Patrol. I will say this one last time. Hand over whatever you're holding at once. And before you do anything unwise, let me remind you that I'll have you on the ground before you can even think about making a run for it. Uh, all right, all right. I'll give it to you. But please let me say something first. If there's any contraband in that book, then the shopkeeper here is the one who slipped it in. I don't have anything to do with this. Why, you trying to leave me on the hook, huh? You were the one who said you wanted it. <laughs> Save it for the interrogation room. Take them away, Latelier. Why would they even try to do this literally right next to her? Like, sure, Chiori was there to, quote, distract her, but... What's going on here? Really? One second you're reading a book and the next you're escorting people away! And who are... Oh! Aren't you the traveler who's been all over the papers recently? Chiori, I'm assuming what you wanted to ask me about has to do with them, right? Ah, maybe I can let you in on what's happening then. Now that Bache has been brought to justice, no new shipments of synth will be made and distributed to sellers. The Fontaine guards have been busy collecting the remaining synth still circulating on the market. Thanks to a tip from our reliable source here, this should be the very last batch. So you were pretending to read a book in order to catch the bad guys! Oh! Paimon almost forgot to introduce ourselves. Paimon is Paimon, and this is the Traveler and Xavier! Hey, I'm Chevraz. 
You probably already heard me introduce myself, so I won't bother repeating it. Why didn't you just arrest them immediately? Yeah, why didn't you make a move as soon as you had the chance? Were you worried that my intel wasn't accurate? No, I wanted to see if the shopkeeper would turn himself in first. All he had to do was come up to me and say that he didn't know where the synth had come from. If he did that, then I wouldn't have had to press charges on him. He had the whole day to turn the synth over to Shavras. But instead, the moment I came up and blocked Shavras's line of sight, he took the opportunity to sell it off. Yep, he made the wrong choice, even though the right choice was right there in front of him. But you knew they wouldn't make the right choice. Yeah, I knew. I was just hoping I'd be wrong for once. Eh. <laughs> Enough about that, Interesting. Though. What did you want to ask me about? Oh, you see, it's like this. I need you to help my movie. I know you're busy catching criminals, but, like, my movie. The Two Musketeers. You certainly have a good eye for a story. So what do you need me to do? Just be the action choreographer for the actors? Yes, that's right. I want to make sure we get all the details right. I want the actor's posture and understanding of firearms to be as realistic as possible. However, I'm afraid this work will require a bit of your time, since you'll have to be present whenever we're filming. Also, as for the pay... No need to say any more. I'll join. Huh? Just like that! She probably owes Shiori for the intel anyway. It's on auto, why is it not? Really? Weird. You're willing to help us with our humble film project? Sure, it's no big deal. As I said, we've wrapped up our investigation here, so I don't have any other tasks on my plate for the moment. Besides, I personally really like this novel. I even have the collector's edition at home. Stories where justice prevails over evil never get old for me. Then we've got a deal? Yes, I'll see you on set tomorrow. Okay. Oh my! That was easy. I can hardly easy. believe it. I should tell Lady Farina immediately. Oh, and I must tell the prop manager and lighting technician to get everything ready. We start filming tomorrow. Calm down, Xavier. The film is going to take more than just a day to finish. Still, I should also head back now and start preparing the actors' costumes and makeup. All right. Guess that's it for today then. Traveler, Paimon, please stay for a moment. I have something to tell you. Then I'll oh. take Xavier back. Poor thing. He's so excited that he can't even walk straight anymore. <sighs> I don't want to spend our first day fishing our producer out of the fountain. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Yep. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Man. I'm gonna definitely have to pull for Chiori. Her voice lines are probably going to be so hilarious. So what did you want to tell us, Chevres? Have you read The Two Musketeers? I've heard about it. The story is about a pair of children born into the household of a baron and their struggle to survive together and take revenge for their mother. They were raised at the baron's estate where their mother worked as a maid. The two were illegitimate children that the baron had with the maid, so they were never treated well by anyone. One day, upon returning home, they found their mother had been murdered and left dead on the floor. It was quite evident that the culprits were the other members of the Baron's household, who never had any kind words to say to them. However, the Baron was able to exert his influence and keep the whole thing under wraps. The mother's death was eventually deemed as a suicide, and there was no chance of bringing her murderers to justice. The two siblings decided to flee and someday avenge their mother. Many years later, members of the Baron's family suddenly started turning up dead one after the other, all killed by gunshot. A rainbow rose was found on each of the victims' bodies, being the flower that the kid's mother liked best. The Baron <laughs> believed that the mother's soul had come to take vengeance on him, so he lived in fear each day. 
as he should. But it was actually those two siblings who had fled all those years ago. They relied on each other to survive and trained day and night, eventually becoming adept musketeers. They used all of their abilities to collect evidence and clues before executing their plan and exacting revenge on the Baron. Their actions let the truth behind their mother's death be known to all. That's quite an exhilarating story. And sounds very familiar to the situation that Linny and Lynette went through. Yep, the Baron got what he deserved for his evil deeds and justice was able to prevail. It was just the kind of story I enjoy. Oh, so is that why you were so willing to join our crew, Chevras? You could say it was one of the reasons. Oh, you mean there were other reasons too? I've read the reports about you. Whether it was at the trials, or when you lent your hand to resolve our nation's crisis, you've shown that you've got a strong sense of justice, as well as a great mind for deductions. Wait, so what you're implying is, there's a case that you need our help with? Yes, you're as sharp as I expected. I'm down. It seems you've experienced many similar situations before. I'm so there's down. There's been a recent murder case involving muskets. The perpetrator's methods appear to be very similar to what is described in the novel. Huh? That's cool. Really? Copycat killer. Papyna didn't see anything about that in today's papers. The Marachose Phantom hasn't yet released any information to the public because the investigation is currently at a standstill. The murderer is extremely cautious. A murder involving firearms? But not that many people use those in Fontaine, right? Could it be someone from your platoon? Impossible. We perform a routine inspection of our firearms and ammo reserves every day. If one of the weapons had been fired, it would stick out like a sore thumb. Besides, I trust the members of my platoon. However... Well, that's all I can disclose about the case today. Huh? What do you mean? I hope you all can go back and get some shut-eye. You can decide tomorrow whether or not you'd like to join the investigation with me. That's fine. I'm aware I'll join. This might not be the ideal time to add more to your plate, but the more capable people we have, the better the chances that justice will prevail. Can't someone from the special patrol help you investigate? Carrying out investigations isn't actually supposed to be our responsibility. Our job is to apprehend the perpetrators. Finding them is really up to the Marachose Phantom. You could say I'm taking part in the investigation out of personal interest. I don't want people to see muskets in a negative way. And also, I'm concerned about the similarity between the crimes and the story. You mean, they might be connected somehow? I suspect so. They're gonna give a bad name to the story. Just to make myself clear, this is not an order, nor is it a deal of any kind. It's a request, nothing more. If you two have any interest in the case after we finish filming tomorrow and are willing to assist me, then I would be most grateful. What do you think, Traveler? Let's give it some thought tomorrow. Yeah, you're right. My butt's getting a little tired, too. We've really been hustling all day. You'd better head back and get some rest. It's good to keep a calm mind, especially when you're about to make an important decision. Otherwise, when the moment comes, you might end up like that shopkeeper and not even realize that the right choice is right there in front of you.